Hello and welcome to this video on Snort 3 Intrusion Policy in the Cisco Secure Firewall Release 7. I'm Alex Tadashev, I'm a Technical Marketing Engineer with Cisco Systems. My goal in this video is to help you understand how to use the user interface on the Firewall Management Center or FMC to edit your Snort 3 Intrusion Policy. So I'm here on the Intrusion Policy page and it's the same location it has been in previous versions. You'll find that under Policies that come down to access control and intrusion. So it's the same screen. It still lists your intrusion policies. However, now what we'll have is we'll have two versions for each intrusion policy, a Snort 2 version and a Snort 3 version. You can see on my list here, I have four policies showing. And let's say I just upgraded this FMC to uh, the new version. What it's going to do is going to take your existing policy. So if I had four intrusion policies before, I'll have four intrusion policies again. It's going to take this existing policies it's going to copy the Snort 2 versions into a Snort 3 version. So it will take the rules that were enabled previously or disabled in each one of these policies, create a new policy, Snort 3 version, with the same rules enabled or disabled. And you can see that over there on the right. So on the right, we have basically three links we can use to edit this policy. We have a Snort 2 version, and that looks just like the previous version looked like. So there's no differences in that UI. We have a Snort 3 version, which we'll look at here shortly, and we have a little pencil over here. So we'll come back to that in a second. But first, I want to show you the overview of the entire page here. So on the upper left, we have a hide Snort 3 sync status link. So what is that? Well, what that does is it shows or hides this sync status below each policy. So as I mentioned, when you upgrade, so when you upgrade, it's going to basically copy your Snort 2 policy into a Snort 3 policy. In that case, the policies are going to be synchronized. They're going to show like they show right here, synchronized, because they're the same. From that point forward, if you go and start changing the Snort 2 version of the policy, enabling or disabling rules, this icon will show out of sync. Instead of green over here, it's going to be an orange icon. It's going to show out of sync for your policies. Now, if you have both Snort 2 and Snort 3 devices in your environment, you're probably going to want to keep these policies in sync because as you deploy them using the access control policy, the system will determine at deployment time which intrusion policy should apply to a device based on the Snort version there. So because of that, you want those two policies to be the same, so you don't want them to be different on your Snort 2 devices versus your Snort 3 devices. Okay, going over to the right, we also have an All IPS Rules link here. So the All IPS Rules link is the same as going up to the Objects menu and picking Intrusion Rules. So it's just a shortcut to the Objects Intrusion Rule Management area. We also have an IPS Mapping button over here. So if I click that, what that's going to show you is a mapping between the Snort 2 and Snort 3 versions of the policy. Now initially, they're going to be the same. So right now the mapping is pretty straightforward. There's a one-to-one -one between the policy types on Snort 3 and Snort 2. But in the future, we anticipate different types of Snort 3 policies where the mapping might not be so one-to-one. -one. So the idea is you can come here and see what that mapping is between those Snort 2 and Snort 3 policy types. So let's create a new policy. I'm gonna go up here and click the Create Policy button. And I'm gonna call this Medium. Call this a medium intrusion policy. We'll pick the inspection mode of detection. And since I said medium, I'm going to use the balanced security rule set. So again, you have the balanced connectivity, several other rule sets here. Any other basis, I can use another policy as my base, just like I could previously as well. But I'm using a TALIS policy. I'm going to use the balanced one for this. Now that it's finished, you'll see I have a new policy here. Now before I go in and edit that, let me show you those three links again. So you had the Snort 2 version, which was just the Snort 2, Snort 3, we'll continue in a second. But what's the pencil then? That's another link. If I click the pencil, it's a basically a way to load this dialog we just saw again. So if you want to change the name, a description, or the inspection mode of your policy, or the base policy, that's what the pencil icon is for. It'll actually do that for both policies. So what you do here impacts both policies, Snort 2 and 3. So I'm going to go to the Snort 3 version. So this is the new Snort 3 policy UI. First of all, let's take a look at how the search works. So there's a search bar here near the top. And here you can search by CVE, SID, reference, or rule message. So let's just type in something here for say the golden spy Trojan. So I type that in, hit enter. It will limit the search to just those things. Now there's some other options below here for preset filters. So you have alert rules, block rules, disable, etc. And that will also shove that into the search. So if I click that, it'll stuff that into the search. And now I'm looking for just golden spy rules that are set to alert. 
They don't happen to be any. I think they're all set to either block or disabled. Also on the search, you have an advanced filters option over here on the right. So if I click advanced, you can search by LSP, by classifications, or by uh, Microsoft vulnerabilities. So LSP is a new release package. So this is a lightweight security package. That's where you get your Snort rules for Snort 3. If you remember with Snort 2, it's an SRU, a security rule update. This is a way to limit the rules you see to just rules from a particular LSP release. So these are named by the year, month, and day. So if you want to find a particular one, say uh, April 22nd, for instance, I can come down here, 2021, 422, and select that. Go OK, and once again, stuff that into the search bar. And now I can see the rules that were released as part of that LSP release. Now let's just run through these rules a little bit here and just see what you can do for each rule. So for each rule, you can expand the rule, which will show you the actual snort rule itself. So that's the detection portion of the rule here. Of course, you have the name, which is going to be the message. That's the info column here. The action is the action. So it's going to either block, alert, or, or be disabled. Block is for snort 3. In snort 2, this would be a drop rule. In snort 3, it's a block rule. You can also add a comment to the rule here by clicking the comments balloon. One thing I want to mention here is you won't find things like suppression and thresholding here. In Snort 2, you would do that in the rule. In Snort 3, you do that over in the objects. So you go over to objects, intrusion rules. That's where you can edit or add your suppressions or thresholds for rules. So let's talk about rule groups, because this is a major change that I think makes rule editing and policy management much easier. So the rule groups over here on the left, so these are categories, within each one of these is a rule group. So within the browser category, you'll see there's several groups there for different types of browsers. You have server categories and others. So what you can do here is, let's say that I have Chrome in my organization and I want to um, change the security level for the Chrome rules. Maybe I want to make it more secure. So like select Chrome rules here. First of all, it'll show me all the Chrome rules on the right. You notice I have 127 rules listed here for Chrome. Now the security level shows here as a two out of four bars. So let's take a look at that. If I click edit, what does that mean? Well, it means I'm using a balanced approach to enforcing these rules. So remember I based this policy on the balanced policy. So the bottom bar would be, here would be connectivity, balanced, security, and maximum detection. So if I click down on connectivity, it changes the dialogue there. So you can see it means use the least aggressive enforcement. But in this case, I want to go even higher. So instead of even going medium, I want to go to the security rules and an aggressive approach to enforcing the rules. So what this will do now is it's going to base the rules that are in the Chrome group on the security over connectivity Talos policy. If I save this, remember we had I think 20 block rules before. Well, look now we have 64 block rules. So out of 127 rules, it's enabled a lot more rules. Now what this has done though, I didn't have to go through these rules and manually do it. I could have gone through and tried to pick the rules myself and which rules I want to use and which ones I think I should, you know, should be enabled. But in this case, all I did was say, hey, I'm going to let Talos decide what they think is a more secure rule set for the Chrome category. So what's nice about that is I don't have to come back next week or next month and maybe next LSP and try to look at this again and figure it out. From now on, those Chrome rules are going to be based on that security rule set. It's all going to be taken care of by Talos, but again, it's just going to up the ante for the Chrome rules. So you can do this on a per group basis. You can increase or decrease the security levels of your group as you see fit. Last thing I want to mention is the save behavior. So as I've been making changes, as I change security levels or if I maybe enable or disable rules, those changes are being saved to the policy as I make them. There's no save button in this policy. You look at the bottom of the screen, all over the screen, there's no save button. So as you make changes, those changes are made on the fly. So I can exit the screen right now. I can go back to the intrusion policy page and the policy changes are made. So that's a quick overview and instruction on how to use the intrusion policy to edit your Snort 3 rule set for the release 7 of the Cisco Secure Firewall. Thanks for watching and as always, happy snorting!